In the long history of Major League Baseball, there have only been four seasons in which the entire league averaged less than eight hits per game. 1907, 1908, 1909, and 1968. As it stands now, a fifth year is about to join this list. The 2021 season. Batting averages, swing and miss percentage, balls put in play. All these numbers are on track to be record-breaking. And accordingly, these figures are starting to raise eyebrows. So now the question is, why? While many factors could contribute, the MLB, the fans, the media, and even the players have all zoned in on one single figure to blame. The pitchers. Why pitchers? Well, it's a sticky situation. So let's back it up. The year is 1884, and Major League Baseball is about to make the most consequential decision in the history of the sport, legalizing the overhand pitch. And as you could imagine, going from underhand to overhand, pitchers became wildly more powerful very quickly. And so commenced the dead ball era, a time where baseball was more so a strategy game than a sports one. From 1900 to 1920, hitting was on the verge of becoming myth. 13 of the 20 seasons spanning this era, the home run leader had under 10 home runs on the season. Batting averages were as low as 239 league wide, slugging 306, and average runs per game was under 4. In 1906, the White Sox won the World Series with a 230 team batting average, earning the nickname the Hitless Wonders. White Sox manager Fielder Jones, well, he laughingly stated, this should prove that leather is mightier than wood. Pitchers were no longer tossing up balls for hitters to hit. Now they had the power to take batters head on. Fastballs, curveballs, screwballs, sliders, these all emerged from the late 1800s to early 1900s. Oh, and I forgot one other pitch. The spitball. The spitball is what truly started it all. When it comes down to pitchers trying to gain an edge on the batter using a foreign substance, this is where it all comes from. The spitball is a fastball, but with knuckleball action, where the ball is altered by applying foreign substances such as saliva, petroleum jelly, or Vaseline to the outside of the ball. It can cause the ball to slip out of the pitcher's fingers without the usual spin that accompanies a pitch. It ends up being a fast pitch with wildly chaotic movement. Some pitchers used it in the late 1800s, but in 1904, pitchers like Elmer Stricklett and Frank Corridon were spitballers that brought it to the majors. The soon-to-be uncontested master of the spitball, however, was just emerging on the scene. Rookie Ed Walsh. Elmer Stricklett, pitcher for the Chicago White Sox in 1904, was asked by his then-manager fielder Jones to teach the spitball to his roommate. That being Walsh, he mastered it. And in his first full season in 1906, pitched a 1.88 ERA, 171 strikeouts, and won the World Series. He broke a then World Series record, throwing 12 strikeouts in a single game. That pitch became so unhittable, by 1911, 90% of Walsh's pitches were spitballs. That same year, the hitter-friendly cork-centered ball was introduced, and Walsh still put up spectacular stats posting a 2.2 ERA with 255 strikeouts. Pitchers all around took notice, and the spitball swept over the league. It would also be a miss not to mention the other type of ball doctoring happening in the MLB, the Emery Ball. The story is pitcher Russ Ford, during a pitching session, lost control of his fastball and threw the ball straight into a concrete pillar. After retrieving it, the ball was damaged, but he still pitched with it. Him and his catcher Ed Jeff Sweeney noticed that the ball suddenly had a better break. By roughening up the side of the baseball, Ford could get a firmer grip, and the ball cut more. In 1909, he used it in a real game, hiding an emery board inside his glove, while also using a ring on his left finger to scuff up the ball. He perfected the technique, finishing the 1910 season with a 26-6 record, 1.65 ERA, and 209 strikeouts. He was virtually unhittable. At the end of the 1911 season, pitchers across the league were finding out ways to doctor balls in every fashion. Whether it be emery paper in a glove, Vaseline on their hands, rings on fingers, 
even chewing slippery elm bark to keep saliva flowing from their mouth to the ball. They found their remedy to beat batters consistently. In 1914, umpire Tom Connolly inspected the game ball after being tipped off that pitcher Ray Keating was doctoring the ball. He inspected the pitcher and noticed sandpaper inside his glove, while also finding the game ball severely scuffed. Both the ball and paper were sent to American League President Ban Johnson, and Connolly was fined $100 and served a 30-day suspension. It was then that the Emory Ball became a national scandal and was officially banned in the majors. This opened a wide, wide door. Cries to ban pitchers using foreign substances rang out. The spitball was dominating the league and many were sick of it. Then, in August of 1920, shortstop Ray Chapman was up to bat when a spitball thrown by Carl Mays hit Chapman in his temple. Chapman died as a result, and baseball took action, banning new pitchers from being able to use the spitball ever again. Once the spitball and emery ball were forbidden, the dead ball era ended immediately. Balls were switched out consistently and changed after any sign of wear and tear. Babe Ruth emerged in 1921 hitting 59 home runs, and George Sisler reached 257 hits in the 1920 season, a long-standing record until broken recently by Ichiro Suzuki. Between 1910 and 1920, eight pitchers had 30 win seasons. Only three pitchers have accomplished that feat in the last 100 years. Once hitting numbers skyrocketed and the live ball era began, the issue of pitchers cheating was never addressed league-wide again, and it would be several decades before coming back into the national spotlight. In 1954, Preacher Rowe was still pitching in the majors at age 39, unusual at the time, and was the third oldest player in the National League in the 1954 season. During his final season, he was asked to explain his longevity, and he replied, clean living and the spitball, rocking the national media. A year later, he described his methodology in a 1955 article in Sports Illustrated. The outlawed spitball was my money pitch. The article was the first major news story about pitchers using foreign substances since the 1920s. This immediately became a trend. The confession of major league pitchers using foreign substances after achieving glory on the diamond. Examples include Gaylord Perry, who published his own book, Me and the Spitter, where he admitted to using grease, Vaseline, KY jelly, and other substances to grip the ball. He was only caught once in his career, the season before he retired. He was given a fine and small suspension at the time, but eventually inducted into the Hall of Fame. Then in 1987, cheating and pitching had a moment in the limelight. In both a book by his teammate Jim Booten and his own autobiography titled Slick, Whitey Ford admitted to being a pitcher who doctored balls. The books include acts like the catcher scraping the ball on the ground before throwing it back, the formulation of mud balls, and having a ring custom made especially for scuffing the baseball. He later defended doctoring baseballs. Who wouldn't try to cheat for a 10x on their contract? Whitey was never caught, inducted into the Hall of Fame, and had his number retired with the New York Yankees. Just after the publication of Whitey's autobiography in 1987, two pitchers in two weeks were caught with emery boards and sandpaper during games. Kevin Gross and Joe Necro. Tampering with baseballs has become so blatant, so abusive, quoted umpire Dave Phillips after catching Necro. And yet the league office suspended the players and did nothing more. Emery boards and ball scuffing was a hot topic again. With umps now looking for boards and paper, pitchers had to find new ways to get a tighter grip on the baseball. Instead of paper, they turned to substances. Substances from this point on are going to expand in name drastically. All you need to know is the difference between modern foreign substances and the spitball ones. While Vaseline, KY Jelly, and saliva are used to loosen the grip on the ball, these new ones are all about firming that grip up. With a stronger grip, pitchers have more control. More control can lead to more rotations of the ball, otherwise known as spin rate, and a higher spin rate results in, well, sharper pitching and bigger contracts. In the 2000s, ejections became more frequent than ever. Julian Tavares in 2004, Brendan Donnelly in 2005, Joel Parata in 2012, Michael Pineda in 2014. Every one of these players was ejected for having pine tar. With the league and umpires trying to crack down on pine tar, new substances grabbed the scene. 
In 2015, pitcher Will Smith got caught with a mixture of rosin and sunscreen on his person, a concoction of two substances that are normally allowed, but when mixed can create a grip on the ball that sticks better than even pine tar, while being less likely to raise eyebrows. The discovery of this mixture just led to Will Smith's suspension, and the MLB treated it as an isolated incident. This has led to the biggest pitching cheating scandal since the dead ball era. On June 4th, 2021, Sports Illustrated scathing article, This Should Be the Biggest Scandal in Sports, dives deep into what they believe is a league-wide epidemic of doctoring baseballs. One ball made its way into an NL dugout last week, where players took turns touching a palm to the sticky material coating it and lifting the baseball, adhered to their hand, into the air. Another one corralled in a different NL dugout, had clear enough fingerprints indented in the goo that opponents could mimic the pitcher's grip. A third one, also in the National League, was so sticky that when an opponent tried to pull the glue off, three inches of seams came off with it. Sticky stuff. At first a mixture of sunscreen and rosin, now various forms of glue, has become so pervasive that one recently retired hurler estimates 80 to 90% of pitchers are using it in some capacity. That is a percentage number that even beats out the frequency of the spitball back in the dead ball era. Last season, when fans were not allowed in the stands due to COVID-19, players and coaches claimed they could hear the rip of the ball leaving the skin. You can hear the friction, says an American League manager. Another retired player likened it to the sound of ripping off a band-aid. One of the best pitchers in baseball, Garrett Cole, was asked if he had ever used spider tack during a game. Here's his response. I don't know. I, I, I don't know if... Uh... I don't know quite, I don't quite know how to answer that, to be honest. Um, St. Louis manager Mike Schilt said that sticky substances used by pitchers are baseball's dirty little secret after his own right-hander Giovanni Gallegos was ordered to switch hats when umpires identified a substance on his bill. Schilt believed that Gallegos was being unfairly singled out for a wildly committed offense. A March memo from MLB Executive Vice President of Baseball Operations Mike Hill to teams laid out a three-point plan for cracking down that included game day compliance officers to monitor areas near the field, a system for submitting baseballs that come out of play to the commissioner's office for inspection, and a review of MLB StatCast data to analyze changes in spin rates among pitchers suspected of using foreign substances. While this all sounds like the MLB taking the necessary steps, it has yet to actually been implemented. Time will tell what is to come of this. But what we do know is that through the history of baseball, this has been an issue for over a hundred years. Everyone assumes that this is a widespread problem, and the evidence suggests that it is. But the community is split on what exactly to do. Do you think pitchers should be allowed to use foreign substances? Do you think that the MLB will finally put an end to this? Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe for more sports history, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you stay up to date with all of our latest content.